Oke, okay. uh, good evening, Dr. Fujio Sensei. Could you hear us? Udah masuk belum? Sorry. Oke. Okay. Hi. Oh, hi. Hello. Hello. Okay. Okay. Good evening. I think it's already 6 p.m. on Japan, right? Okay. Oh, Fujio Senpai. Bakja. Ah, Senpai. Oh, genki desu ka? Win, genki desu. Bakchan, genki. Genki da yo. Itsu mo genki desu. Okay. Kagoshima wa dou desu ka? Hmm? Kagoshima de dou desu ka? 鹿児島、コロナも大丈夫。大丈夫。大丈夫。よかったですよ。バクちゃん。うん。大きくなった。そう。<笑><笑>そうだよ。美味しい食べ物食べるから。オッケー、バクちゃん、あん。はいはい。can you hear me clearly？ yes yes you can。I can. Okay. Dr. Rafat, can you start? Okay. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you for your participation in Neurosurgical Lecture 2020 with our main topic is uh, pituitary. And dear honorable doctors, colleagues, thank you for your participation in this evening. 
uh, today we will talk about uh, all about uh, P2 Cherry. It's like a sharing experience between two centers. First in Kagoshima University Hospital will be uh, Dr. Fujio Sensei, a neurosurgeon, will share his experience about pituitary adenoma in uh, Kagoshima Neurosurgery Center. And also we have Dr. Yuris Bahtiar from Diponogoro University and Karyadi General Hospital Semarang and we'll share about uh, his experience too about the pituitary adenoma. And so, uh, and our discussion this evening will be led by Dr. Krishna Saniadi Prihastomo, a neurosurgeon in Karyadi General Hospital. And for all of you, please upon joining, uh, mute your microphone so that our discussion will not be interrupted by a noise. And also, if you have any question, uh, you can chat in or in this chat room. Uh, you can ask in English or Indonesian. If you want to ask in Indonesian, uh, we will help you to translate it to English and Dr. Fujio will answer the question. And so uh, let's start this discussion. First, I uh, will... Uh, welcome Dr. Krishna Saniadi, or moderator this after, uh, this evening. Please, Dr. Krishna, time is yours. Thank you, Dr. Rofat, uh, for your uh, introduction. Yeah, uh, okay. So, Dr. Rofat already uh, mentioned about our uh, activities this evening. And we also would like to welcome our distinguished guest, uh, Dr. Fujio, Fujio Sensei. Thank uh, you. Nice to meet you. And we also have uh, Dr. Yuris Pahtiar as our uh, second presenter. So uh, for the first uh, lecture, I would like to uh, invite Dr. Fujio for uh, the presentations. Uh, before uh, he deliver his presentation, I would like to inform uh, all of the guests that uh, Dr. Fujio is now uh, as an assistant, a senior assistant professor in uh, Kagoshima, Kagoshima University School of Medicine. Kagoshima, Japan, and he is now holding a position as the director of uh, Pituitary Disorder Center in Kagoshima University Hospital. And he uh, has a subspecialty in treatment of the pituitary tumor, and now he is uh, a member of many uh, professional uh, society in Japan and also in the world. So, uh, Fujio Sensei, uh, I would like to give you time for about 30 minutes for your lecture and uh, and then uh, uh, continued with uh, discussions. Uh, so could you sensei please uh, share your screen and uh, let's uh, talk about uh, your presentation. Thank you uh, for your introduction. So, and thank you very much uh, for uh, the opportunity to make a presentation. Okay. Yes, uh, your your uh, screen okay. can be seen in here, and it's great. Okay. Your talk also good, so. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you again. So my name is Shingo Fujio. Okay. Uh, you know, our prefecture has a big volcano, uh, Mount Sakurajima. So uh, it uh, erupts every day, but uh, our city is very safe. So, uh, okay, uh, do you know, <laughs> uh, this photo was taken uh, 12 years ago. Do you know who he is? Dr. Yes, Bakker, do you know? Not much changing, yeah? Okay. Yeah. Uh, yes, he is a Dr. Bakker. In his, uh, he is very slim, slim, <laughs> okay? Okay, so uh, okay, <clears throat> so uh, the contents of uh, today's lecture. At first, uh, I'd like to introduce the uh, 2070 WHO classification of tumors of pituitary gland. Uh, there are uh, three main pathways uh, of uh, adenohypophysial cell differentiation to introduce hormone. Uh, 
which are determined uh, according to the expression of specific uh, transcription factor. Uh, Smoltorov, Sirotorov, and Lactotorov regulated by PIT1. And uh, Koleskotorov uh, regulated by TPIT. And uh, Gonadotorov regulated by uh, SF1. The uh, new WHO classification uh, officially uh, required routine IHC for the anterior lobe hormone and uh, additionally uh, required a transcription factor. What is the non functioning pituitary adenoma? So, uh, within each group, uh, tumors with uh, clinical symptoms are functioning adenoma. On the other hand, the tumor without uh, clinical symptoms, such as silent adenoma or the PIT1 derivation, a silent cholesterol adenoma, a silent gonadotroph adenoma, and null cell adenoma. So null cell adenoma is negative for all hormones and tra transcription factor. So those uh, tumor are non-functioning pituitary adenoma. So uh, in the uh, so in the uh, uh, old uh, 2004 WH classification, a typical adenoma was defined as tumor cell with elevated mitotic index and KI67 labeling index greater than 3%, and uh, extensive uh, nuclear stain for uh, P53. Also, uh, these different uh, definitions have uh, prevailed. This uh, was no longer considered a sufficient marker to identify case uh, prosthesivity uh, with an um, unfavorable uh, behavior. In the new edition, uh, the concept of atypical adenoma has been removed and sparsely granulated smasters adenoma, lactotroph adenoma in men, Krug cell adenoma, silent cholesterol adenoma, uh, Pluri-hormonal PIT1 uh, positive adenoma. Uh, uh, so, sorry, uh, yes, it, those tumors are aggressive adenoma. Although uh, uh, these uh, definition have uh, prevailed, uh, this was no longer considered a sufficient marker. Sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, however, uh, the uh, assessment of markers of tumor uh, proliferation was recommended. Uh, the diagnostic criteria for pituitary carcinoma remain unchanged, uh, still uh, requiring uh, evidence for distance metastasis or, uh, and uh, meningeal uh, dissemination. Next topic is uh, epidemiology and clinical presentation. Uh, population study uh, from uh, this country have estimated that the uh, prevalence of clinical non-functioning pituitary adenoma are uh, 7 to 41.3 cases per 100,000 of population. Uh, from the uh, Brain Tumor Registry of Japan, uh, published uh, three years ago, uh, half of adenomas are non-functioning pituitary adenoma. Uh, non-functioning pituitary adenomas uh, accounts for about 10% of all brain tumors in Japan. Uh, from the uh, GNS uh, report, uh, most patients uh, present with symptoms of mass effects, such as uh, visual field dis defect, headaches, and uh, hypopituitarism. 
so a uh, six one year old man, the tumor uh, compress the optic nerve. This patient have has a bitemporal hemianopia. Uh, regarding uh, visual field tests, Humphrey uh, is more sensitive than Goldman. If surgery results in rapid tumor shrink and release of pressure on the optic nerve, visual field impairment will recover in more than 50%. Okay, so, uh, wait a minute, please, sorry. Uh, yes, uh, I guess uh, many patients, uh, sorry, many people think that pituitary function will uh, decline after surgery. But recently, uh, after resection, endocrine normalization rates were greater than uh, the incidence of new endocrine deficits. Next topic is surgery. This chart shows annual trends of pituitary surgery from Japan. The number of endoscopic transgenital surgery has been increasing annually, but the rate of microscopic TSF had a decreasing trend. Interestingly, endoscopic uh, TSS was performed frequently in high volume center than a low volume center. This is Japanese trend. So uh, advance of future surgery, such as two not two forehand surgery. This is our uh, uh, style and uh, interoperative MRI, magnetic, uh, electromagnetic navigation, and instrument for endoscopic surgery uh, contribute to improve the safety of pituitary surgery. But uh, surgery for large and giant adenoma and adenoma with uh, extracapsular extension, e extension are uh, high risk. Uh, this is a 77 uh, year old human. She has large tumor. After tumor removal, a post-operative bleeding occurred. In such case, combined stura infracellular approach is effective to reduce surgical complication. So uh, this surgery, uh, this surgeon uh, approach from the transcranial. It's mine, so I approach from transcranial. A 28 years old male he had a much robular, huge, large tumor. Intraperiptic view, a tumor was removed with TSS. The tumor is soft, and fortunately, not so many bleeding. The tumor at spread middle cranial fossa was removed. Okay, so we can see, we could observe each section. So uh, the tumor spread middle cranial fossa was removed with supracellular approach. So uh, this is an uh, endoscopic view. Oh, so this right from uh, supracellular. So uh, the uh, tumor uh, was uh, removed uh, adequately. The tumor was subtotally removed without trouble. So, but we should know the limitation of combined approach. Dr. Nishioka 
a very skillful computer surgeon reported that total removal of adenoma uh, with a combined approach was achieved in seven uh, cases, subtotal in 21 cases, and partial removal in one case. Surgical complication observed in 12, 41.4%, uh, he reported. So also we experienced uh, such a case in the uh, tumor hemorrhage and infarction. So uh, we should know that aim of this approach is not to achieve a complete tumor removal, but to obtain maximum tumor resection with maxim minimum risk of mobility. So let's change the subjects. So uh, CS leak, about CS leak. So CS leak uh, considers serious complication associated with transcranial uh, surgery. Numerous techniques uh, have been uh, previously reported for reconstruction of cellar following pedicure surgery, or pedicure, uh, pedicure uh, vascularized uh, nasocellular uh, flaps have been used since the 20, uh, 2000s. This relatively large flap significantly reduced the incidence of post-operative CSC leak in extended endoscopic approach. However, uh, so uh, it uh, does result in increased operative time and prolonged feeding period with uh, crusting uh, along with the new uh, caudal nasal flap. Instead of uh, the nasal flap, we have used fibrin glue soaked gelatin sponge, FGGS, for tissue sealing in TSS for over 10 years. Uh, we use gelatin sponge called Zerohom. Uh, Zerohom is absorbed completely uh, with little tissue reaction. When placed in soft tissue, uh, Zerohom is usually absorbed completely within four to six weeks without inducing extensive uh, scar tissue. So fibrin glue uh, soaked uh, gelatin sponge, FGGS, is made of gelatin sponge and fibrin glue. So fibrin glue is a topical uh, biological adhesion, the effect of which imitates the final stage of coagulation. This glue uh, consists of a solution of concentrated human fibrinogen, which is activated by the uh, addiction uh, uh, of thrombin and uh, calcium. This chart show a coagulation system. A fibrin is generated from uh, fibrinogen by the action of thrombin. So this movie shows how to make FGGS. At first, uh, infiltrate fibrinogen with uh, zero form uh, adequacy. Then, uh, first, it in a thrombin solution. So, uh, this uh, viscosity is appropriate. FGGS is useful, but we encountered the problem because we make FGGS on the table, it takes 10 to 20 seconds to bring it to operated field. Very rapid coating of uh, fibrin glue occasionally it prevents good fixation of FGGS to the surrounding piece. On such occasion, uh, we have you, uh, uh, performed the uh, producing using FGGS with uh, diluted thrombin solution resulting in good reflectation. So we want to know uh, what is the optimal thrombin dilution for FGGS. We performed experiment to evaluate it, the effect of thrombin duration on the adhesion strength of FGGS. 
So uh, the maximum adhesion strength was greater for FGGS with one ten, uh, one ten uh, diluted trombi solution uh, than the FGGS uh, prepared with higher concentration. Adhesion strength did not decay for twenty seconds. That average time to bring from the tray to the operating field. So this paper shows a CSS leak grading. I'd like to show you how to do seroplasty for each grade. This is grade one uh, case. So CSS leak uh, is uh, leaking uh, slightly like this. So we pack uh, Sera with FG, uh, sorry, uh, CSS leakage. So we pack Sera with FGS only. Sometimes we add suture, but uh, it is not uh, duty. So, uh, sorry. We made Sera with septal bone and covered it uh, FGGS again. So uh, grade two case, uh, there is a small defect uh, on the uh, arachnoid. In such case, uh, we pack uh, uh, the defect with FGGS and we add fat, then uh, we covered it with uh, FGGS again. So seroplasty uh, was performed with septal bone and we covered it with FGGS. Some, sometimes we add uh, surplus fibrin glue. You know, so recently uh, we uh, use uh, dural uh, graft, uh, graft matrix named Duragen. It is very useful to cover Dura. In this case, uh, there was a uh, uh, sorry. So uh, in this case, uh, uh, there was a huge e dura defect, but uh, we covered it with uh, dura gen only. But after surgery, no CS leakage. So, uh, great some case. So, uh, after tumor removal of chronic pharyngioma, we inserted uh, Duragen. This is Duragen. And the Dura. After that, we add uh, fat and suture fat with uh, uh, and Dura and covered fat and uh, fibrin glue, uh, sorry, FGGS. After seroplasty, uh, we covered the bone uh, with FGGS. Uh, this is the result of our seraphora reconstruction. In 351 cases without extended TSS, fat was used in only 10%. 10 uh, Post-operative CS leakage needed second reconstruction ensured in only three cases, 0.8%. We have uh, 19 uh, cases of uh, extensive TSS, we have never experienced linorea, but we are willing to use spinal uh, donut for three days for extensive uh, extended TSS. Okay, so uh, regarding uh, uh, tumor uh, recurrence or progression after removal, uh, from, so from this paper, uh, following uh, gross total removal, it's a five and 10 year uh, probability of recurrence was 3.9% and 4.7%. In 
in the uh, patient with subtotal rejection, uh, the five and 10 year probability of uh, disease progression was uh, about 20%. So radiotherapy is useful to uh, such a recurrence tumor. Next is uh, radiotherapy. Next tema is radiotherapy. This table show the result of SRS treatment. The median tumor control rate is 19 to 95% at five years. SRS is very effective for pituitary tumor. But so we introduced one case. 57 case, they get all men, a combined spura and infra uh, cellular approach was performed for his huge pituitary tumor. Six years after operation, uh, the radiotherapy tumor was enlarged, so a gamma knife radiotherapy was uh, performed. <coughs> Six months later, after a gamma knife, he came to a hospital complaining of fatigue and general weakness. What should we think about his ACTH and cortisol level decreased? and he needs hydrocortisone. So uh, pituitary dysfunction uh, sometimes occurs after SRS. We should be aware of pituitary dysfunction after radiotherapy, even if it is a uh, SRS. So, uh, okay. Now, uh, there are no medical uh, treatment uh, covered by uh, insurance uh, in Japan. But uh, some reports show dopamine agonists, uh, cabergolin, uh, bronchopulpin therapy uh, in patients with NF -oma, non functional adenoma is associated with uh, decreased prevalence of radiola tumor enlargement. So uh, medication for uh, pituitary carcinoma and uh, aggressive pituitary tumors. Unfortunately, we have only temozolomide. So temozolomide is used, but the therapeutic effect is uh, limited, limited. Last topic is the QOL of the patient. So this paper show the uh, QOL in patient with pituitary adenoma. The patient with uh, non-functioning pituitary adenoma, this red line, showed lower QOL than general health population, this black line. So uh, having a hormone deficit associated with uh, pituitary adenoma may also uh, contribute to low QL. So appropriate uh, hormone replacement therapy is required. So uh, this chart shows the symptom of hormone deficiency. The fatigue is common symptom of hormone deficiency, deficiency. And we should know the uh, hypothyroidism caused Infecundity. ACTH deficiency causes arthralgia. Conclusion So, non functioning pituitary adenoma is often associated with the disturbance, but improve after surgery. Surgical treatment of few complex pituitary adenoma still remains a big challenge. SRS for uh, non-functioning non pituitary adenoma is very effective, but requires attention to pituitary dysfunction. Appropriate uh, hormone replacement therapy is required to maintain the QOL of the patient. Thank you for your attention. Okay. Uh, thank you, Fujio Sensei. It was just uh, on time, 30 minutes, and
uh, for the participant, if you have any questions or uh, any topic for discussion, you are very welcome to write over the uh, chat pop-ups. Or otherwise, you can also uh, ask directly. The, uh, uh, we will move to the next speaker, Dr. Yuris Prahtiar. Uh, 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 and after you, Dr. Yuris Prahtiar, we will have our discussion uh, session. So uh, please prepare your question and you can write it down on the chat uh, below your uh, Zoom. Uh, windows. Dr. Yuris Bakhtiar, uh, 30 minutes for your uh, presentation. Time is yours. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, nice presentation, uh, Dr. Fujio Sensei. And now I will going to present about the endocrine problem in perioperative surgery, perioperative of pituitary adenoma. Just a short uh, presentation, but I think this is more important thing that we have to know uh, about the endocrine problem in pituitary adenoma. We are, we are not uh, talking about the uh, functional pituitary adenoma here, but uh, mostly talking about the most common uh, clinical features uh, perioperatively during the uh, treatment of pituitary adenoma in case of surgical pituitary adenoma. So, <clears throat> as we know that uh, in pituitary or cellular surgical uh, uh, anatomy, uh, we have to know about the boundaries of uh, uh, anatomical view here that we have a cellular floor and also we have a hypothalamus that uh, most important thing is uh, correlated with the uh, HPA axis, the hypothalamic pituitary axis of the uh, uh, endocrine. <clears throat> just a, a, a few, not, not, uh, it's just a few about the hypothalamic and pituitary axis. We have two types of uh, endocrine uh, and, and pituitary. We have uh, anterior pituitary and posterior pituitary gland. The differences between two of them is how do they secrete the hormone. So the, we have two types of uh, secretions that is uh, including the neurohypophysis and also the neurosecretory cells during the portal vein in of the pituitary, anterior, anterior pituitary hormone. This means that we have direct mechanism of endocrine uh, secretions and also the indirect uh, secretory, uh, secretory of endocrine known that they have they produce oxytocin and ADH and the other an anterior pituitary hormone in which they all uh, almost become a, a problem if they become a functional pituitary adenoma is they also produce the TSH, ACTH, gonadotropin, port hormone, prolactin and endo endorphin. Related to the hypothalamic uh, uh, and uh, pituitary axis, of the axis. We have to know about the mechanism of the hypothalamus, hypothalamus relation with anterior pituitary and peripheral endocrine gland. In this case, we have to know when which hormone will be releasing hormone and stimulate the other organ. And also, they still have they 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 already they also have a potency to become a uh, inhibitions of feedback negative. I'm sorry. So, pituitary gland hormone 
uh, here we can see that the ACTH uh, have a target organ is adrenal cortex and the effect of the hormone is stimulate the production of corticosteroid hormone. And if it's age, uh, have a target cell or um, female and ovaries and tests in male and stimulate the sperm or ovarium follicles growth. In the luteinizing hormone in ovarius and testes also have a <coughs> basis in testes and estrogen and progesterone test in ovarium. And also on the other hormones, they have their own target cells that we have to understand this mechanism before we are problem in pituitary adenoma. This is important because in, in such a uh, uh, function of ICTH or maybe uh, uh, TSH or maybe stimulation hormone, maybe they become, uh, they, they, they will produce a TSH and uh, make a target organ become larger or hypertrophy. So we have to understand this matter because in, in cases of Cushing disease, if the, uh, the, uh, the ACTH uh, hormone become larger because of adenoma, the adrenal, uh, adrenal uh, organ, also adrenal, uh, supra-adrenal, uh, uh, supra-adrenal, supra uh, what can I say? Uh, supra-adrenal cortex, the supra-adrenal cortex or adrenal cortex will become larger because of the ACTH excess. So we have to defer about the Cushing disease or Cushing syndrome due to the adrenal cortex uh, tumor. In hypothalamic, they have uh, also a positive hypothalamus, yes, like a thyroid uh, uh, stimulating hormone or stimulating factor in hypothalamic to uh, stimulate the anterior hormone to uh, secrete the TSH. So the TRH will be uh, stimulate the pituitary anterior uh, to produce TSH, but here in prolactin, hypothalamus mostly will be uh, inhibit the prolactin. So this is different between uh, hypothalamic uh, uh, prolactin axis to because of most of the hypothalamus will uh, secrete the inhibiting factor. Here, the sign of symptoms of the secretions and sign and symptoms of hypoxecretions like gonadotropin. Mostly, the hypersecretion will be clinically silenced, but the sign and symptom of hypoxecretion will be mood swings, importance, vaginal dryness, hot uh, flashes, osteoporosis, between libido. And they sh they, you should check the L, uh, LH, VSH, serum testosterone, and serum estradiol. And also the causing disease in science center of uh, hypersecretion of ACTH and Buffalo Baham, Papal Street and hypertensions. And if the hyposecretions, there will be problem in uh, uh, metabolic of uh, electrolyte, like hyponatremia, hypoglycemia, hypotension and fatigue. And we have to check the cortisol. Also the TSH, you can see the hypersecretion of TSH will make a goiter moist skin, tachycardia, but the hyposecretion will weight gain, fatigue, constipation, and bradycardia. And the most important thing that we have to know the TSH hormone, we have to check the TSH and free T4. Why free T4? Because free T4 is most uh, active than T3 in the body. In hormone prolactin, Protein, uh, in hypersecretion, we have a menstrual irregularities, infertility, and hypersecretion will be silence. And most valuable uh, uh, endocrine should be checked about the protein. And the acromegaly, 
we don't need uh, we we have to check the g eights but also the igf one but the problem in indonesia is maybe it's very difficult to check all of the uh, all of the endocrine laboratory or hormonal panel but at least we can try to uh, differentiate uh, clinically by uh, understanding the symptoms, sign and symptom of hypersecretion hormonal and hyposecretion hormonal cases. <clears throat> In GH hypersecretions, I will talk about this because the IgH uh, hypersecretion is uh, very uh, uh, have an uh, impact on mortality and morbidity because of its effect on cardiovascular system and respiratory system. So the GH hypersecretion in cardiovascular system, it will be make cardiomyopathy, hyperkinetic syndrome, and diastolic systolic dysfunction, and arterial hypertension, powerful parties, arrhythmia, pathway and function, and respiratory most of them are because of macroglossia and they all have a obstructive and central sleep apnea and maybe small obstruction that uh, make uh, be, uh, become a problem when you do the surgery on gh hypersecretion adenoma why because of uh, the high gh and gf1 are correlated with some of clinical uh, aspect, like uh, lead to deformity of facial bones, uh, hypertrophy of pharyngeal and laryngeal cartilage, and thickening of macrogosia, which ultimately can lead to inspiratory collapse of the hypophonics, especially during sleep, and stimulate lung growth by increasing the number of size of alveoli and excess uh, proliferative, but also degenerative effect on smooth muscles. So the muscles are not uh, 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 functionally not optimum, and optimum to do the, their, their function in the, mostly in the respiratory system. And also the decreased lung recoil might be explained by elevated peripheral rib cage resistance because of hypotrophic muscle and rib cage or caused by the obesity, but could also be related to high of size. In recommendation of the GH uh, adenoma, or if we are thinking that this is agromegalic uh, patients, we have to do the pulmonary function test, at least spirometric test. Because of we have to understand that uh, preautophy in patient with unexplained shortness of breath and decreased exercise capacity uh, will be increased, will increase the morbidity after the surgery. Yeah. So please uh, understand the morbidity of GH excess. And another hypersecretions of the problem of GH hypersecretions is due to the insulin resistance of and diabetes mellitus and become a dyslipidemia and hypertrichosis. In the gastrointestinal, maybe you can find the colon chronic polyps, polyps of colon, and physiologically emotional liability, social withdrawal because of they have become big, large uh, features, and uh, distorted, distorted body image. And in woman, maybe physiologically, uh, psychologically, uh, they think that the uh, uh, they have a large uh, elongations of uh, muscles or a large elongation of vertebral bodies or large uh, uh, arm. Uh, yeah, so, and most of the offer growth of manipulations and motions or also increasing this spacing. So another point of the other uh, hypersecretions problems is hyperthyroidism. Why the hyperthyroidism? We have to exclude this is a TSOMA or retention of thyroid hormone in this uh, to, to, uh, with this uh, algorithm. But the problem is the problem is 
not of the not of the uh, measurements in this uh, uh, what uh, algorithm can be done in animation. So anyway, when you have the hyperthyroidism uh, patients with the hyperthyroidism uh, clinical features, and you have to know that aortyroidism before surgery should be achieved because uh, hyperthyroidism will be make a problem. Such as a primary hypothyroid causing pituitary hyperplasia, yeah, this is a loss of thoracic feedback inhibition of upper production of thyroid hormone, which might result in rapid pituitary hyperplasia. So because of uh, primary hypothyroidism will make a feedback inhibitions and become a reactive pituitary hyperplasia. And the examination show that uh, will be increased at TSH and reduce FT3 and reduce FT4. But, and then because of uh, TSH also have a same regulation with prolactin level, this will be make a serum protein level increasing. Yeah, so the elevated protein level could be uh, due to the TRH can not only activate the TSH secreting cells, but also stimulate the protein secreting cells. Yeah. The engorge and enlarge pituitary gland compress the pituitary stock, or sometimes because of the hyperplasia of the pituitary, so will be compressed the pituitary stock and affecting the hypophysial hypophysio portal circulation and resulting the reduced dopamine and become a, a productive releasing hormone. In hypothyroidism, yeah, if the hypothyroidism occur, it will be risk of coronary event during the surgery, even possible due to increase cholesterol level and prolonged half-life of multiple coagulation factor and anemia. And also a uh, uh, possible uh, ST change and low voltage on el electrocardiogram and maybe ventricle tachycardia. So in this case, if you found the hypothyroidism, we have to replace with a levothyroxine at least seven days. In, 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 if I am not wrong, that they, they recommend seven days before the surgery to, 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 to achieve a uh, uh, Eutyridism, yeah. But if you, if there were no, uh, if the patient cannot achieve the Eutyridism, you have to alert about the cardiovascular event during the surgery. And hypothyroidism, mm -hmm. the uh, the most problem of hypothyroidism is thyrotoxicosis, thyrotoxicosis, because of the effect of positive enotropic and chronotropic effect. In vasodilatation, vasodilatation and decrease in systemic vascular system and increase in sodium and water retentions. And we already know about the thyroid storm, and it will be uh, become a high mortality rate. So, in the hypothyroidism, please use the treatment to, to, to normalize the thyroid, thyroid hormone prior to the surgery. So this is most important thing that hypothyroidism should be treated before surgery. Another uh, problem, a metabolic problem of the uh, preoperative uh, endocrine uh, hypersecretion or hyposecretions is uh, hypocortisolism during uh, pituitary surgery. Why? Because the happy axis uh, changes during procedure. So when we, we do the uh, manipulation of pituitary, maybe the hypercortisolism uh, will be occur. It will make a hypoglycemia, hyponatremia, hyperkalemia, and also hypotension unresponsive to vasopressor and fluid support present. And uh, recommendations in this uh, diagram you should check the ACTH-124 test. But the problem if, is in Indonesia, we cannot do this because of uh, the test 
may be expensive and also not uh, uh, support by the insurance. But we can use the uh, mostly known recommendation that during the surgery, uh, before the surgery, you use uh, we can use the hydrocortisone in uh, 50 milligram every eight hour on day zero, 25 milligram every eight hour on day one, and 25 milligram at eight on day two. And also in the autonomic regimen using dexamethasone is four milligram at induction of anesthesia, two milligram at 0 0.8 and hour eight yeah, on D1 and 0 0.5 milligram at D2. So we all use, uh, use, uh, usually use this one to uh, reduce the possible hypercortisolism during the pituitary surgery. And the other is uh, diabetes inhibitors after pituitary surgery. It's most common uh, uh, complication due to the pituitary surgery because of uh, <clears throat> manipulation of a pituitary stock. But the diabetes inhibitors, we can uh, suspect in patients, yeah, because of uh, in the Selamas and endocrine in 2014, they found that greater present change in serum, yeah, natrium serum. It means the natrium post surgical, uh, mean natrium pre surgical, divide the natrium pre surgical and preoperative serum natrium and also performing gastrotomies will be significantly increase the likelihood of postoperative DI. Anyway, this is just a, a old ratio of this patient or we can suspect it that patient will become, a, they will have the diabetes inhibitors, but we have truly uh, assess that we have to know the, about the sign and symptom of diabetes inhibitors. When the patient has polyuria, polydipsia, and thirst, and typically occurring within 24 or 48 hours of surgery, and usually urine output uh, for four until 18 liter per day, or diluted urine, urine about uh, 20, uh, more than 25 milliliter per kilogram per hour, or 20, 200. A milliliter per hours in two consecutive hours. So continuing within two hours and or maybe uh, hypovolemia uh, clinically, clinically hypovolemia in non-alert situations. We have to understand that this is a sign of symptom of diabetes insipidus. The treatments usually is not uh, uh, not uh, uh, difficult, but the problem is in ICU or high care unit. You have to know about the problem of the hypovolemic. The treatment should be maintenance of water balance with hypotonic solutions. Mostly, we use the D five. Uh, or solutions and or D0.25 or 0.25% uh, and also use the desmopressin. We can use the subcutaneous or intramuscular desmopressin and intranasally desmopressin and also orally. We have already this uh, drug in Indonesia, Minirin. Even some some hospital some area, we cannot find the mineral, but you can try the desmopressin uh, intra muscle muscle desmopressin to reduce the uh, hypo uh, urine up. I think that that is my presentations because it's important thing uh, if you have to do the surgery and pray up uh, in pituitary adenoma. So we can uh, use the time for the discussions. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Thank you, Dr. Yuris, for your uh, presentations. Uh, we already have some questions from the audience. Uh, the first question is for Fuji Sensei, already answered uh, on the chat uh, pop up, so uh, everyone can uh, read it by uh, themselves. And second question from uh, Dr. Tania, uh, she is the endocrino endocrinologist uh, in uh, our hospital. And uh, her question was uh, for Dr. Yudis, do we have some cutaneous regimen for the small patients in Indonesia, of course? Yeah, I think we don't have the subcutaneous regimen of the small patients, uh, Tania, but Dr. Tania. But uh, we already, we, we, we know that we can use the intramuscular uh, regimen of uh, desmopressin. Basically, it's same, but uh, the combination will be better using the subcutaneous. Maybe you know better than me because of your endocrinologist. So, just in this uh, presentation, we have to, uh, I want to, uh, uh, to 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 emphasize the uh, residents or the student that uh, diabetes insipidus could be happen everywhere, even for the traumatic uh, patients. But the problem is, these uh, patients are not ready in the hospital. So be careful about this, and uh, quite stressful because of uh, hypothalamic problem. Okay, Dr. Yuris. Uh, so I'm trying to sh uh, shifting the question to Fuji Sensei, still about uh, desmopressin. Uh, so do you uh, also usually use for uh, uh, management of diabetes insipidus uh, after uh, the transpen the endoscopic transpenoid surgery? And which uh, which uh, kind of desmopressin was it? Subcutaneous, intravenous, or uh, intranasal? The spray desmopressin. Thank you for your question. So uh, we use uh, subcutaneous uh, desmopressin only with uh, 12 hours after surgery. After that, we use oral desmopressin. It's very useful. OK, thank you. So uh, oral is very useful because we can, uh, we can uh, uh, treat the patient based on uh, the dose uh, we give uh, orally, right? OK. so. Uh, second question so, for Fuji uh, Sensei, uh, uh, as already, as already mentioned, mentioned by uh, Dr. Yuri, that uh, there, are there are not so many, so many uh, hormonal panels panel can, can be done in uh, such uh, limited resource like in Asia. So what kind of hormonal uh, laboratory panel should we uh, examine before the surgery of uh, pituitary adenoma? So. Uh, what kind of uh, hormonal laboratory uh, panel we should uh, examine before the surgery? Uh, do you get my, my question, Fujio Sensei? Okay, sorry. Uh, so, so sorry, could, could you repeat your question again? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, what kind of uh, hormonal laboratory panel we uh, check before the surgery? So what kind of hormonal uh, laboratory panel uh, before the surgery we should check uh, for the patients uh, before he or she underwent the surgery? And for such limited resource like Indonesia, we mm. don't have many uh, complete uh, hormonal uh, checking before the surgery. So what do you suggest? What kind of uh, hormonal panel minimum we have uh, uh, before the surgery? Okay. Uh... <laughs> You did, do you remember so? But 10 years ago, we have patient uh, looks like uh, Cushing disease, but so his ACTH level is low. So uh, she, is, she was not Cushing uh, uh, ACTH adenoma, uh, she is Cushing uh, syndrome. Syndrome, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, I understand. Okay, okay. So uh, it's very important to check uh, ACTH. Uh, growth hormone uh, and prolactin uh, and TSA. Uh, so, okay, all of the maybe. Uh, for maybe. So, but yeah. uh, we should. So, can you check the TSH routine? No? Yes, yes, we can use it. Okay. Mm. So, TSH. TSH. 
yeah, so to so okay to uh, to find uh, functioning pitch adenoma, <laughs> we should check all hormone, but we don't uh, need LH and FH, FFH. But uh, other hormone is uh, very useful to detect functioning adenoma. Mm. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 I can. I can tell you. So, uh, of course, uh, yeah. Ideally, we should check all uh, check whether adenoma is functional or non-functional. But uh, minimum, we uh, mm. check the prolactin, the TSH, uh, the thyroid uh, panel, and uh, maybe, if I'm not mistaken, uh, cortisol. Yeah. yeah. Growth hormone as well. Uh, growth hormone. Mm, no? We are not sure about that, but, but anyway. In Indonesian's uh, Indonesian uh, model, so I, I say Indonesian model because of they don't have such kind of huge uh, uh, pituitary hormone panel. Oh. I recommend it to 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 check the hormone that will be correlated with metabolic problem. Mm. I think that's important. Thing. Like uh, uh, prolactin, yes, maybe, maybe, but. We can because of uh, we have to check the this is proctinoma or not, but for the metabolic problem we have to check the free T4 mm. that is free T4 and cortisols and also the growth hormone. I'm not sure about that, but we can check that. Mm. But it's very expensive. Yeah. It's very important to check the patient symptom. Yes, and so. If you guess uh, she or he is acromegaly or Cushing disease, you should check uh, uh, the targeted hormone. Uh, and so TCH OMA is very uh, rare, very rare. Okay, so if you can't check all hormone, you should uh, uh, have the uh, limitation of hormone check. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Thank you very much. Mm. Thank you, Dr. Sensei. And uh, there is still another question. Uh, yes, here we have uh, questions about the hyponatremic complications. Yeah. Maybe, Doctor uh, Doctor Krishna, we have I have the questions about the uh, uh, question from Ditskeska to Doctor Yus. I have patient with a CT pituitary tumor, four time surgery with hyponatremia complication. Can we prevent the hyponatremia event? Yeah, the hyponatremia event uh, mostly uh, due to the, in this case, it's maybe due to the syn uh, syndrome inappropriate AGH. So, SEADH. In Indonesia, itu ada namanya SEADH. Maybe it's correlated with these uh, patients due to the syn uh, uh, in inappropriate of IDH secretions. In these patients, uh, the hyponatremia will should have uh, hydrocortisone or maybe hydrocortisone and also uh, natremic uh, natrium uh, supplement. So I think this is important. Maybe here we have uh, Dr. Tania, endocrinologist for Indonesia. Okay, Dr. maybe Tania. Dr. Tania is still with us, endocrinologist uh, from our hospital. Maybe uh, you can add some uh, advice or some answer regarding the hyponatremia complication after surgery. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah, Dr. Tania, please. I'm nice very lucky to be here. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for sending the invitation, Dr. Krishna. Yes. Yeah. Yes. We found hypocortisolism due to hyper hypocortisolism after the uh, surgery. So we can give the hydrocortisone postoperatively, and the doses should start it with 20 milligrams. We can use orally if it is not. Uh, you know, in bad condition, but we can also use intravenously in patient with severe hypocortisolism. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Tania. Yeah. Thank you. 
Yes. Okay. Uh, another question for uh, we have in our hospital, both orally and intravenously. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So uh, we move to the next questions. Uh, to Dr. Yunis, how about the recurrence of uh, macroadenoma hypophysi after perform a surgery? Uh, question from our college Hasan Barakma. What? 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 Uh, how about recurrence of uh, macroadenoma hypophysi after perform surgery? Recurrence rate. If you talk about the recurrence, is uh, mostly the recurrence rate is quietly high. Quietly higher, yes, Fujio Sensei. Or maybe Fujio Sensei can answer this uh, problem because of you have to at least try to uh, remove a, a lot of a uh, lot of uh, tumor mm. because the recovery rates will increase if we didn't, didn't remove uh, totally or gross totally. Maybe Doctor Fujio will answer mm. these questions. Sorry. I don't know the meaning of MAH. What? Macro adenoma hypothesis and re yes, recurrent a, recurrence. Ah, uh, uh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, so, so, uh, so fortunately in Japan, so we can check uh, MRI very easily. So uh, the layer, so the recurrence big tumor, but uh, some cases we have. So, uh, uh, how about yeah? So, um, so many cases, uh, recurrence tumor is very, very hard, very hard. So it's difficult to remove. So uh, we use uh, SRS uh, after uh, partial removal for recurrence tumor. I have uh, over fifty cases after SRS. Uh, there are no uh, recurrence after SRS. Uh, I think SRS is very effective. For recurrence tumor. Uh, you say, what about the uh, Linux uh, radiotherapy instead of SRS? Limit, limit? Linux. 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 The Linux, the, uh, the, uh, the conventional radiotherapy. Ah, convention. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so for if, if so the tumor spreads uh, intracranial space. Uh, sometimes we use uh, conventional uh, uh, radiotherapy, uh, but you know uh, this therapy uh, has the risk of uh, hypothyroidism. So uh, for us, uh, this uh, uh, therapy is very rare. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. But it is it, very effective to uh, uh, reduce tumor regrowth. Mm. Okay, we got it. I have one question to Fujio Sensei. Mm. Is that any uh, correlation with the MIB1 index and recurrent rates? Because or this is compulsory to, to check the MIB1 index in a pituitary tumor. Mm. So, uh, WHO, new WHO classification recommend to check uh, uh, MIB1 index, but uh, uh, so, but uh, not always uh, MIB1 index is correlate with tumor uh, aggressiveness. Mm. But, yeah, 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 yeah. okay, you know, so, but uh, uh, the tumor uh, with uh, over 3% of MIB1 index, uh, we should. Uh, uh, follow very carefully. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. okay. Okay. So regarding to hyponatremia, so I I recommend you. Yeah, yeah. To check uh, body weight body weight every day. Every day. Every day. So if oh. the uh, the patient uh, body weight uh, are decreasing uh, within one week after uh, surgery. Uh, we should uh, some, uh, we should check the uh, natrium level. So it is uh, uh, the body weight uh, decreasing is a sign of hyponatremia. Is there uh, any uh, sorry, Sensei? Is there uh, any uh, recommendations about uh, when we have to check the natrium after the uh, surgery? About uh, seven days to ten days uh, after surgery. Okay. Seven days to ten days after surgery, yeah? Yeah, yeah. and also the body weights uh, we should measure it every day. Yeah? Every day, yeah. no, not every day. <laughs> yes, 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 because that's important. 
So uh, another question for uh, Fuji Sensei uh, mm -hmm. from Tania also. According to your experience, when you consider to give Kader Golin in patient with macro adenoma hypophysis, the uh, Wait a minute, please. Wait. The, uh, mm -hmm. the second question uh, before the last question. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When you consider to give Kader Golin in, in patient with pituitary uh, uh, adenoma, yes. Kader Golin. So, um, so for uh, non-functioning adenoma, we don't use cabergolin to for the uh, tuber shooting. So, wait, when you consider to give one in Yeah, yeah. So, uh, okay. So for production adenoma, so we use cabergolin. Uh, but uh, I mentioned. Uh, in the chat box, so uh, Kabelgolin has uh, uh, no uh, power to uh, make uh, uh, dramatic shrink. <laughs> okay, so we prefer to do SRS uh, uh, without Kabelgolin. Okay. Okay. But only limited to uh, proactinoma, right? Yeah, yeah, proactinoma, yeah. Yeah, but not not yeah, so, but much, not, uh, not so much uh, shrinkage. Okay. Okay, another question. Uh, okay, this is also uh, uh, interesting question. Some pituitary micro adenoma, so this is not macro, but micro, micro adenoma identify on MRI. What is your suggestion to specifically identify micro adenoma? Uh, sorry, wait a minute, sorry. Uh, mm. So um, it's very <laughs> difficult. For, for example, Cushing disease. Uh, so um, dynamic study is uh, sometimes useful to detect uh, uh, small uh, microadenoma. And uh, sometimes so it's very use, useful to check the uh, position of pituitary stock. The stock. Okay. If the pituitary stock is uh, located in the right side, mm. the tumor may be located in the left side. Okay? Yes. Sometimes it's very useful to detect uh, small tumor. Mm. And side. also the mm. dynamic MRI, right? Mm, yes, dynamic is also uh, very useful. Mm. Okay. Dr. Yuris, maybe you have another uh, uh, additional. Yeah. In case of uh, uh, ACTH tumor. Sometimes we are thinking that it's a Cushing disease, but please be careful about Cushing syndrome. So it's quite diff uh, similar clinically funding, but it's quite a difference. So it's it's not. Uh, yeah, it's maybe you can consider to do the uh, abdomen examinations. Or intra ultrasonographic in the CTH because of uh, in so many cases in here we are thinking about Cushing disease, but uh, the actual disease is Cushing syndrome. So be careful about that. And using, I agree with this, Dr. Fujio, we are trying to do the dynamic MRI with this patient. So in every patient with a uh, uh, small microadenoma, we have to do the dynamic MRI. This is compulsory, and I agree with Dr. Fuji. Thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Dr. Miris, for your additional answer. And I think this is the last question from the chat room. Uh, I would like to ask Is a adjuvant therapy, such as radiotherapy or systemic therapy, needed? after pituitary surgery when we suspect there is remaining tumor? I think you already mentioned it, but uh, would you say maybe you also would like to uh, add another uh, explanation about adjuvant therapy after uh, uh, surgery? Okay, wait a minute, please. Sorry. Yes, the last question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. So uh, you know, so no functioning pituitary adenoma is benign. Benign. Uh, especially for uh, uh, older patients. So our principle, so if uh, there is tumor uh, remand, uh, residual tumor, we follow them uh, carefully. 
So uh, if the uh, retinal tumor enlarged, uh, we decide to do uh, radiotherapy or not. So uh, I consider uh, patient's the age and the condition. Okay, so okay. if okay, so so if the tumor enlarges uh, very uh, slowly, uh, if the patient is uh, old, so uh, we don't apply SRS, only follow up. Follow up, yes. Mm -hmm. Yuri, yeah. you have uh, explanation. Yeah, we have to thinking about what kind of uh, if if uh, non-functional. So the problem is a compression problem in supracellular regions. So when you do the decompressions, I think this is enough. Uh, but we have to continue the evaluations. I agree with Dr. Fujio, but in case of prolactinoma, maybe we can use the carbeprolin for the treatment of prolactin uh, excess. Uh, anyway, evaluation is the uh, most important thing here. I agree with Dr. Fujio that pituitary adenoma, adenoma is uh, benign, but still become uh, still uh, uh, have a possibility to enlarge. So clinically, clinical symptoms are important. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you, Dr. Giris. So, uh, is there any questions uh, more from the uh, uh, audience here? I don't think there is uh, another questions. Uh, so, Fuji Sensei and Dr. Yuris Bahtiar, that was very fantastic lecture we have uh, in this uh, evening. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, and I would like to uh, ask all of the audience to uh, turn in on all uh, the video so we can uh, take a picture together. So although we connected by online, uh, we can uh, say hi to each other. Yes, uh, and I would like to uh, print shot and uh, make a picture of all of us. So please turn on all of the audience. Okay. Terima kasih dok, keren dok. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay, another one. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, thank, you very much. Uh, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. 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 Okay, thank you everybody. Thank you Dr. Fujio, Dr. Yuris, and Dr. Krishna for your participation in this discussion. Uh, I would also remind you that uh, two days from now that we will have the same event, uh, Neurosurgical Lecture 2020, and this time we will talk about uh, fine. I will, uh, it will start on Thursday, 3 December, 3rd December 2020 at uh, 16. So please join us so that we can uh, you can ask any question from the, our uh, participant and also uh, we can talk about especially spine. Uh, okay, so let me share the screen now. So please uh, join us uh, in this event uh, or future event and many events more. So thank you for your uh, participation and we'll see you in two days from now. Thank you, everybody. See you. Dr. Fujio, thank you very Hi. much. Thank, thank you. you, thank you. Much. Nice to meet you. <laughs> I want to go to Indonesia after coronavirus. Please come, <laughs> please come, please come. <laughs> I will invite you another event. Please come, okay? See you then. Thank you. Nice Thank you. you. Bye. Bye. Thank Bye. you very Bye. much. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, everybody.